Right then, welcome back, and today, oh dear me, dear me, that is just, well, it's just a bit rude, isn't it? A bit of motorcycling pornography for for the masses. Today, we're going to do the MV Augusta F4RR from 2019, and uh, the race bike is a bit of a pig. Um, there's something amiss with the the way the back suspension is all configured, it wants to wheelie. It's very similar to the R1s, but just in a slightly different way. And I was hoping the road bike was going to be different, but you know what I'm going to say, alas, it is not. It is, um, it is exactly the same. So, setup wise, as per normal, as per every time, we did the standard two and eight, Two on the front preload, eight on the rear, eight on the front spring comp rebound, two on the rear, graduated the gear in, calibrations went to aggressive, and we had a little bit onto the gear in 230 miles an hour. I thought she had enough mojo to get there. And the reason I went to UMC is because I really struggled setting the bike up at Cadwell, so I wanted to see where the energy was going in the bike. And we did the outer course because it's faster, and so on and so forth. And... Yeah, we had, well, we had a few problems. Um, it launches well, it launches launches really well. Um, and she gets up to top speed quite quickly as well. I say top speed, 170, 180. Um, it outdragged, well, pretty much everything apart from the bike that was, that was on pole position. So the notes I made were, the rear suspension is way too hard, it won't turn, and the brakes are crap. Um, so not, not a glowing first term report by any means for the uh, for the F4RR. However, rather than give up on it, I thought we'd do a little bit of tinkering. It didn't take much to bring it to somewhere where it was usable, um, but we'll get onto that as we come to it. The race at UMC, we ran a bit wide into the first term, we ended up down in sixth, and it quickly became apparent the bike did not like a high level of engine braking. It didn't like to slide, it doesn't like to really party. Um, it wants wheels in line, it wants early braking, high corner speed. Um, it does not want to do point and squirt and spin the back wheel. It will run nice tight lines, you've just got to stand it up before you get on the gas. It's very, very sensitive to lean angle and throttle. Um, we did cut through at the chicane where the AI won't use the curbs and we're allowed to, and we ended up by the end of the first lap, we were in first anyway, so we have made a fairly decent go of it on a bike that didn't really want to play, but you can see as I'm going into corners, it's running wide, I'm getting on the gas, the tyre temp didn't really change the whole race through, which to say it's got a hard front, um, yes we ran a soft rear, but we ran a hard front and soft rear and it didn't really seem to put that much energy on the tyres, what it wanted to do was slide a little bit and then wheelie. We did a 144.6 in the race, which would have put a 64th. Now I did go back and I mucked about with the setup. I took one off the front preload, I took two off the rear preload, I added one to the rear spring, and I added one to the front end spring compression and rebound. So that's the front spring hardness, compression and rebound. Led everything else the same. Um, when a hard medium, because I've just mucked about with it a little bit, we've took some preload off, we've put a bit of rear spring and I was hoping that it would use the tyres a bit better be a bit more rideable and it was it was it was it was so we went from a 144.6 to a 142.8 so we took 1.8 seconds nearly two seconds out just for a couple of clicks here and there and the bike was much more usable it still didn't want to put a massive amount of energy through the tyres because I wasn't trying to slide it about we did nine laps and we were in the one what 144s to 142 so it's pretty consistent and that's what we're going for remember we're going for consistency the fireblade is 12th the 2019 fireblade and we would have gone 27th with that time 142.8 so we've kind of worked out where it is we know that it doesn't like to be slid about and doesn't like to be out of line so i'll go to daytona i don't really know the track it'll allow me to see what happens if i miss breaking points and we had two starts, um, and it was just absolute carnage. The AI riders were just, it was like a destruction derby. At the third time of asking, we actually got away quite cleanly. And 
I think there was a glitch in the matrix because into the first turn everybody just decided to move out of the way um, yeah and we went from, <laughs> from last to first in a corner which was strange but the bike was lively who -ho, was she lively um, engine braking is on one because engine braking two the back end but look at the brakes on here the back ends off the floor it will stick with you it will take quite a lot of abuse on the front end it's not like you get on the brakes and it washes out it doesn't um, we ran medium front medium rear the banking sucks a lot of energy out of the tire the tires were nearly cold by the time you get around the start finish I was struggling a bit with the bus stop I didn't really know where the braking points were and I was getting a time penalty apparently for running off the track there but I wasn't off the track I don't really know um, and we did a 145.1 which would have put us what 29th on the leaderboard I didn't go back it became very quickly apparent this was not a bike to muck about on the leaderboards um, so I thought well I'll go to tracks I know I'll try and work out where it wants to be because it's, it was very difficult to to make changes and, and try and ride the bike and work out what it wanted it just wants to wheelie constantly um, I don't know if they've done something with the linkage or pivot point on the back end when they put the data in the game but it's very strange you bleed all the preload and the rear spring off and it just still wants to wheelie um, it's, it is I say crap brakes it was crap on the brakes because it was sliding about you take the engine braking off and you do lose some braking performance so take that with a pinch of salt but at Magni Cores we had a bit of fun um, I like the track it, it's one of my favourites in the game and I tend to find I can ride wherever I want and go to the front and it doesn't really matter but what the bike was starting to do was put load into the tyres because I knew the track and I knew the braking points were I could load it up a bit more coming out of here it starts to spin and then it pops a little wheelie so that was the first clue that it does have quite a lot of rear grip so is the wheelie problem a grip problem or is it a swing arm length pivot point problem I would say it's probably the latter and the high level of rear grip that the bike has probably makes that problem even worse. Um, I ended up running a gear higher, come out in second, it's got 250 horsepower, I mean it should be able to pull itself out of wherever. Um, but yeah, we were just starting to get it moving about, we were starting to get heat into the tyres, it was moving about on the brakes, it was moving about on the power, so I, I held a faint hope that it was going to be a bit of a boogie king, it wasn't. We went 148th at Magni Corps. And I thought, right, well, is it the suspension? Is the suspension the issue? Do we need to go to a more bumpy track? So I thought, well, I'll just, in for a penny and for a pound, we'll go to the deep end and we'll go to Imola and we'll have a little turn on the GP course. So we went hard, medium. I haven't made any changes from the time attack at UMC. I've had a play with it, but I haven't made any changes that I've kept on the bike. It's exactly the same setup. We had a little bit of a ride and cowboy moment the first few bends. All of a sudden we're getting the power down, we've got decent acceleration, we're going past fire blades quite quickly. Yes, she's moving about, she's a bit lively, but I quite like that. I quite like the fact that she's not just straight and steady and boring and everything else. What it didn't like doing was changing a line once you'd committed. If you were going to go tight, go tight. If you were going to run wide and, and clip the eight, just whatever. But it did not want to change lines mid-corner. It was quite stubborn um, with with not letting you adjust what you were doing you just had to kind of kind of commit to the line you were on and this this kind of sums up the bike for me hard on the brakes it just steps out of line a tiny little bit but it holds the slide to the apex of the corner now that felt really good um, it, I just got it right and that's the problem you've got to get it right and I tried to chase down the leader, the M1000RR, just the, or an S1000RR, fastest things in the world. Um, we were a couple of seconds behind at the start of the third lap, and I just got on the gas a bit early out the, the last corner there, and he just ran onto the kerb, and it, yeah, yeah, I might have been able to get in the draft and get past, but it is what it is. We did, what, a 141.6, which if I'd gone back to the leaderboards would have got 104th. I thought, right, we're getting somewhere now. I know I wants to be ridden. I know when to get on the gas and when not to get on the gas, you've got to stand it up a little bit, so I thought we'll go Kyle Army. It was a toss-up between this and Phillip Island. I chose Kyle Army just because it's got a bit more elevation change and it's got some really, really naughty corners out the back end of the circuit that I thought would test my theory of get on the brakes, let it slide around a bit and, and we'll go from there. Had an absolute ding-dong with a Suzuki and a, another BMW. 
another S1000RR. I managed to get the Suzuki to back off a little bit of a game of chicken and then missed the braking point and ran wide because I'm an absolute clown. Didn't fall off, end up back behind the Suzuki, which is the bike we're doing next, by the way. We did an endurance race with it um, already at Suco Fast. I'm going to do the setup in the next couple of days. And up the hill, up the hill to one of my favourite sets of corners at Kyle Army, I thought I'll go between them and I absolutely bottled it. But look at the bike moving about, back wheel off the deck, in there, really nice and tight, and then it just sits me up and just lifts the front wheel up, which I got a little penalty, but it felt dirty. It felt like I'd cheated the game a little bit because I ran onto the grass, but I thought I'll let it, I'll let it be. I'm not really too worried. I'm sure Speedy will give me a 10 second penalty for something or other. Um, but again, now we're getting energy into the tires, into the bike. You can see it moving about up the hill. <laughs> Look at that. Most of the bikes in the game, you'd be off, you'd be flying into a low earth orbit. Um, but this thing just, pick a line, get on the brakes, put, set the steering angle, and it will just hold it all the way around. Um, it didn't like the faster stuff. It tended to be a little bit understeery. That's because we've dropped the rear preload down a little bit. So if you are going to use it, just be wary that you've got to turn in a little bit earlier. It's not, it's not going to let you turn late and turn sharp. It will, it will just spit you off. Um, and it still likes to wheelie. I couldn't decide between anti wheelie one or anti wheelie two. Anti wheelie two for launchers. Anti wheelie one mainly during the races. It just depends on what your poison is. If you're happy with a rear brake, you can run anti wheelie one. Um, I did go back and do a time attack. Um, I wasn't happy with the lowly place that I had on the on the leaderboards at Kyle Army. I thought I deserved a, a higher placing than that. Not that this bike helped me too much, but we did a 139.3 in the race, and then I went back, um, and that would have put us 146. I went back and did a 138.0, which would have put us 87th, which it's still not mega. I still would like to be higher up the leaderboard, but the bike just didn't want to do it. I think if I get on a Panigale V4 or something like that, a decent fire blade, I think we'll be able to get quite quite high up into the leaderboard, it's not a problem. But by now we're starting to get the yellows, sorry, the tires towards yellow, so we're getting plenty of load through. So I was quite happy with the setup. It's not the easiest thing in the world to ride, believe me it's not. But if if it clicks, it clicks and you'll be able to go quite quickly on it. So last but not least then, Canto South in the wet. Now I only came because I wanted to see if it would slide about and whether it was happy letting you do it. A couple of rough starts, I mean the AI again. The hard rear end allied with a wet tyre and a wet track, it just wanted to spin up a little bit off the start, so I had to go a little bit steadier just on the launch. I left the anti-wheelie on two. I was concerned that as it spun and gripped, it would fire the front end into the air and it would do it quite quickly. So yeah, there was a bit of, um, well, a bit of argy-bargy for the want of a better word. Uh, it was just, it boils back to that not wanting to change line. You'll notice the angle of the bike really changes as I'm going around the corners. And it's magnified on the wets because as soon as you try to put more or less steering angle in, you either lost the front or you lost the rear. So you have to be really careful. What it was really good on with this tire in these conditions was the front end. As long as you didn't have too much lean angle on it would go steaming past pretty much anything on the brakes, it didn't really matter. And through this corner, that's the back straight down towards this 90 degree left, back up towards the start finish straight. Ew, the second lap, I was convinced I was getting off and I was probably going to end up through somebody's bedroom window in a right mess, but it will boogie. It's just very snappy. It's very, very snappy. But you set the angle like here, just set the angle, use the gas, to either open or close the line rather than mucking about with a lean angle and the steering and she's all right she's she's all she's good it's very what's the word i'm looking for it's very one-dimensional in how it likes to be ridden wheels in line no sliding no mucking about but through here this is how quickly it gets sideways it got very sideways the rear tire went from not really interested to being wide awake quite quickly the ai running quite close together at the front the bmw s1000 um bottled it that time and I really tried to catch the Japanese rider in front I really tried I was trying not to slide it I was trying to be very clean and economical with my lines and just tried my very hardest to get back to the front but no matter what I did um, I just I just couldn't get there it just did not have enough as an overall package to let me get back to the front what I made upon the brakes, he pulled out, or she pulled out, they pulled out again on the acceleration zones. It got a little bit sideways there, a bit of a wheelie. 
and then we go through here again and I should really have lifted the gas off but I thought now nah, we'll have another big old slide and then into the last corner I ran too tight and as soon as I'd done it I knew as well and I just thought ah well it's done now it's done like I'm never gonna I've not got the traction I've not got the go to get up the hill so we just had a bit of fun tried to cook a rear tyre and it spat the front end exactly what I thought it might do it spat the front end up in the air um, and we finished second but it was a good bit of fun now I did go back I went back and did a time attack and this is the frustrating thing about this motorcycle my fastest time was on a 2019 Fireblade which was fourth I think on the leaderboards it was first for a while but other people have gone fast which is absolutely fine that's the whole point of it and I went back and I wasn't expecting anything from this bike I thought if I get in the top 25 I'll be very happy and I'm trying to ride this bike as clean and as tidy as I possibly can no sliding no mucking about stand it up get on the gas get on the brakes just try not to upset it try to ride it nice and clean and you know what we did a 138.6 all right it was wet all right, I'm calling it 138.7 yes it was wet and we did a 133.3 which was faster than the fire blade that was in the leaderboards before from me so it's gone fourth and it's frustrating because there's obviously a fast bike in there but it needs the right kind of track and it needs the right kind of approach to be able to get the most out of it there are very few mv f4s in any of the leaderboards there is an absolute dearth of f4 rrs they just don't exist they're all in the top 130s 150s 170s 190s but yeah we did a 133.323 and that was after well we did 10 laps but it's consistent 33 34 34 34 34 32 but it was invalid because i skipped across the chicane and there you go i mean the top time neon monk that is that's seriously fast that but there's no other mvs anywhere they just don't, they don't exist not sorry there's no other mvf4s not just mvs there are other mvs there's the rvs and there's a few brutales and, and fewer than super veloces and stuff like that but f4rs just don't exist and i can see why it's a very very difficult bike to ride but anyway setup wise that's where it's ended up um, you're either going to love it or hate it it's going to be absolute marmite um or vegemite whatever phrase you want to use for it it it's either going to work for you or it's not it literally is that much of a, a finicky niche kind of bike for setting it up i was hoping it was going to be good I really struggled with it. I struggled with the race. I mean, I'm still not over that race, been in it on the next to the last corner and finishing second. After we'd fell off about 500 times, I'm, I still have nightmares about it. But pros, it's good at launching. It's fast to get to its top speed. It gets to like maximum velocity quite quick. High rear grip. So if, depending on how you set it up, if it's low grip conditions or it's quite chilly or whatever, it has high rear grip, so it will switch the tire on quite quick. Cons, it's very hard to set up. It likes to wheelie as a consequence of the high rear grip and the really stiff rear suspension. Um, it reminds me of a Kawasaki from the from the mid 90s where there's no go whatsoever in the rear suspension, like no give, no go, no nothing. It's just made of girders um, and it doesn't like to play. Wheels in line, like two, and I, I use the phrase 250 GP style lines quite a lot, but literally conserve momentum, don't over brake, don't try to over gas it on the exits, don't get it sideways. The corner at Imola was about as far sideways as it wants to get, and it will hold that angle, that, that very slight angle, and it will let you do that, but any more than that, now nah, getting it on the gas, it is not going to be going sideways everywhere and, and giving you replay gold, it's just not going to do that yeah and there you go i wish i wish it was faster i wish it was better uh, there are other f4s that i'm gonna have a go at and we'll see how we stand but hmm, yeah don't meet your heroes it's one of them i'm afraid thanks for watching thanks for watching commenting liking subscribing i appreciate every single one of you you're absolute legends um and fingers crossed i will see you next time take care stay safe peace